Well, hello, and welcome back to the rustic Vaughn Lodge. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you about She by H. Ryder Haggard. Uh, Henry Ryder Haggard uh, wrote a ton of books back in the Victorian age. Uh, he is most famously known uh, for King Solomon's Mines, and in fact, pretty much the only two books you usually could find uh, are King Solomon's Mines and She. Uh, you might sometimes find uh, the novel Alan Quartermain uh, also, but usually you see those three and that's it. Uh, but he wrote upwards of around 50 books, I think. Uh, yeah, and in print, they could be tough to find. Uh, you could find any of them, again, uh, on the ebooks. On uh, If you got a Kindle, you could read everything he wrote. Again, the saving grace of ebooks. Uh, or the fact that you can get a lot of a lot of old books that you just won't find the publishers just won't publish uh, but she has never been out of print I got the uh, penguin classics edition right here look at that great risque cover uh, but it's okay to show it because it's a penguin classic so it's art it's all right um, yeah so she a great book published in 1887 about she who must be obeyed she, who is Aisha, uh, who um, lives in the lost city of Kor in Africa. Uh, and she is immortal. She's been alive for 2,000 years. And uh, it's a, basically a lost, a lost world, a lost civilization story. And uh, it starts off with uh, Cambridge professor Holly. Uh, Holly's hanging out, and then one day his friend uh, Vincy bursts in gives him a box and says, you have to take this box and my kid. Uh, apparently, uh, Vince, uh, Vincy, uh, he's got a, a disease that's killing him. His wife is dead and he needs Holly to take care of his son. And inside the box is something that uh, his son, uh, Leo, uh, needs to see when he turns 25 years old. So what's Holly to do? He's got to take this kid, right? So he takes in Leo, and he becomes his guardian, grows up to love Leo. Leo's a great guy. Uh, and when Leo turns 25, they get out the old box, and they open it up. Uh, and inside uh, is a letter and uh, a shard. And uh, these two things uh, guide them out on an adventure. And they end up traveling to Africa. And I'm not going to give a ton of detail here. Uh, because again, this is a really good book and you should read it. I don't want to just give you the plot, um, but I will tell you my impressions of it. Uh, so anyway, they go off on this adventure. Uh, they eventually uh, find the city of Kor and they run into uh, uh, these, uh, these people uh, who are ruled over by she who must be obeyed. And the, the great thing about, there are a couple good things about this book. One is the sheer fun adventure of the whole thing. Uh, it is a great adventure story. If you've ever read King Solomon's Mines, you know what you're going to get. Uh, but this one's a little more interesting just because of the character of Aisha herself. Really fascinating character because she's not a one-dimensional character. You know, she's very interesting. And she's incredibly powerful. And she's been powerful for an awful long time. This is a woman who's been queen for 2,000 years and is used to that. She's used to to giving orders and having them obeyed. Uh, and she's got magical powers. She can heal you. Uh, she can read your thoughts. I mean, she's just, she's just a pretty scary character, actually. Um, but she does fall in love with handsome Leo, because Leo's a handsome guy. And uh, Aisha becomes convinced that Leo is the reincarnation uh, of her lover, Calicrates. I think it was Calicrates. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head, but she believes that he is the uh, reincarnation of her lover from thousands of, uh, thousands of years ago. Now, whether he is or not, well, I'll let you find that out. Uh, and there's just a bunch of cool stuff in here. There's just adventure after adventure. Uh, uh, there's the tension between uh, Holly, Leo, and Aisha. Uh, 
will they be able to escape from her and from this lost world? Uh, it's interesting. And now there's a bunch of old-timey stuff that you're going to find in here that you find in any old-timey book uh, written uh, during this time. Uh, it it uh, was it has been regarded as a piece of imperialist fiction uh, because it was uh, written uh, during the um, the British Empire when they were running around stomping all over all these other other countries. And uh, you do get a sense of that in this book. The interesting thing is that uh, Henry Ryder Haggard spent a lot of time in Africa. He was in Africa about six years. And uh, so his depictions of natives are more well-rounded, uh, a little bit more sophisticated than some others that you'd find uh, at that time. There's a lot of stuff that was written at that time that was just so racist and awful. You just, you read it and you're like, geez. He was an imperialist. There's no, there's no denying that. And he did believe, of course, that uh, British white guys uh, were, the, were the highest types of people, as uh, British white guys at the time did. Uh, but at the same time, having spent all that time in Africa, around Africans, he knew it wasn't as simple as that. And so you get some of that in this book, and you get some of that in King Solomon's minds. It's not just this uh, one-dimensional view of other people. Although at the same time, uh, you do get his sense of things that British were, you know, up there. British white guys. Uh, and yet here you have them in this story, completely powerless. <laughs> uh, and under the sway of this woman. Um, so it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to read this book now. Uh, again, it's another one of those artifacts of its time, like a couple of the other books that I've been talking about. And uh, it's great fun. It's a really interesting read. Aisha is a fascinating character. I mean, she is both intriguing, interesting. Uh, you sympathize with her, and yet she's terrifying at the same time. And at the end of this book, the end of this book just has just a couple great terrifying moments. Oh man, I would tell you them because they're so great I want to, but I won't. Because if you haven't read She, you really should read it. Um, if you ever get the chance, pick this up and, and give it a read. Really interesting. Uh, it's a fun adventure and it's also uh, yet another window uh, <laughs> into a different time and a different mindset. And um, yeah, it was a whole nother world back then. And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, as bad as things are now, with racism and inequality and all that, and there's, it's still really bad. Man, I, for the last couple of years, we've seen that. Uh, but it's interesting to look back at a, at a time like this, uh, over 100 years ago, when things were just so much worse in that regard. And people's mindsets were just set in stone on this stuff. Uh, I mean, even a guy who had spent all that time with uh, Africans and should know, and should know better, I still had the idea that uh, the English people were the tops, you know, the best, highest type of person. Um, and there was some sort of little battle going on, I think, in his brain uh, between that idea, which he believed, and the evidence uh, of his own experience. Um, it's interesting. Interesting stuff. Uh, so yeah, she. A good book. A, a really good book. And uh, one I've come back to uh, every few years. Um, it's another one of those old books that you know, you come back to it, and you get something different out of it. So, yeah, that's my recommendation for today. She by H. Ryder Haggard. All right. Thanks, guys, for visiting me here at the Lodge, and I hope to see you again soon.